Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I get asked a lot of general legal questions. And uh, the question I think I get asked the most is, if I'm called to testify as a witness in court, and I'm put in the witness box, and an attorney stands up to ask me a question, and says, I want you to answer the question yes or no, and then tosses me a question doesn't quite fit yes or no. Do I have to answer yes or no? Or what do I do? What do I do? And we see it on TV all the time, so it seems like something that could happen. (laughs) But of course, things that happen in courtrooms on TV aren't necessarily that accurate. So just so you know, I taught trial practice for 10 years. I've tried cases. Uh, I've sat in courtrooms and watched a lot of cases also. And of course, I can just answer this question for you because the answer, of course, is that you do not have to answer the way that the attorney tells you to answer. Your job is to answer the question truthfully. So you'll often see young attorneys or inexperienced attorneys do that because they think they're being clever. Uh, But you will almost never see uh, a more seasoned attorney asking a question like that because they understand that it's not right. And by the way, there's ways around it and better ways to ask those questions. So first of all, you get on the stand and the attorney leans over, gives you a mean look, fancy pants attorney, and says, I'm going to ask you a question and you are to answer the question yes or no. Not all questions can be answered that way. Have you stopped beating your wife? Yes or no? Have you stopped beating your wife? Yes. No. Yes. (laughs) First of all, you have to understand that your job as a witness is to answer questions truthfully. They ask questions, you give the answers. But the judge is in charge of what happens in the courtroom. Okay, so that's the first thing you have to understand. But since your job is to answer questions, the person asking you the question can't tell you how to answer the question. Yes or no? What if I said, I want you to answer the question in German? Obviously, I can't make you do silly things like that. But here's the thing. Let's assume that you're on the stand, fancy pants attorneys, stands up and goes, I want you to answer the question yes or no. So you're looking at him. And he asks a question that can't be answered yes or no. You can answer his question by saying, I can't answer that yes or no. Now, here's the thing. You might say, but Steve, what if he says, no, I demand that you answer yes or no. Well, at that point, you turn to the judge and go, your honor, I got a problem. He's asking me to answer a question, yes or no. I can answer his question, but it's not going to be a yes or no. And you have to understand that judges run their courtrooms during trial. Now, I know some people go, Steve, once in a while you throw us something that's so obvious. Why do you say it? No, the reason I say this is important. Most states have court rules that regulate what happens in a courtroom. And Michigan's are the Michigan court rules, the MCRs. And in the MCRs, there's a section on trial and the conduct of a trial, how a trial is conducted. And it will actually say, here are the things that will happen in a trial. But there's a catch-all that says, by the way, the judge has oversight and the ability to, if necessary modify some of these rules or or do more of this and less of this. And generally speaking, the judges are given a lot of latitude in the courtroom. Okay? So the judge is running the courtroom. The judge is running the trial. So if Perry Mason stands up and says, Your Honor, I asked that witness to answer yes or no. Well, that's too bad. You ain't running the show. The judge is. So... If I had a witness who is concerned about this before a trial, I would tell them. If they do that to you and you honestly can't answer the question, the first thing you say is, I honestly can't answer the question that way. But you have to hear the question first, of course. So they say, you're going to answer a question, yes or no. Have you stopped beating your wife? Like, I can't answer that question, yes or no, obviously. And I insist, turn to the judge, your honor, I can't answer the question, yes or no, and I think it's pretty obvious that I can't. And the judge will most likely say, well, answer the question to the best of your ability. Because I've seen people, never with the yes or no thing, but with other things. I've seen people ask a question where they give an answer and the questioning attorney says, no, that's inappropriate. And I've seen a person, witness, turn to the judge and say, 
That's the best answer I can give, Your Honor. And the judge will look at the attorney and say, if you have a follow-up question, follow it up. But you can't tell them that they've got to give you the answer you want. They have to give you the answer that is them testifying truthfully. So that's not a way they can do it. Now, you have to remember that it might not go that way either. We've seen judges do crazy things. So back up all the way to the beginning. You get on the stand. You're sitting there answering questions. Opposing attorney stands up and goes, I want to answer this next question, yes or no. They then ask you a question that cannot be answered, yes or no. So you go, I can't answer that question, yes or no. I can answer it, just not yes or no. And they say, we insist. We demand. You're under oath. You understand the penalties for perjury. Tell the jury, yes or no. Then you turn to the judge and go, Your Honor, I can answer the question. I just can't do it yes or no. And by the way, in case you're curious, <laughs> the reason I look this way, I have a poster of Robbie Robertson on that wall, but it's a picture of a human. So whenever I think I'm talking to a person, I like to look over. This is a picture of a human over here. <laughs> Big fan of Robbie Robertson, by the way. So you turn to the judge and go, Your Honor, I can't answer yes or no. Now, what if the judge is a lunkhead and the judge goes, no, I think you can. Answer it yes or no. At that point, I would give an answer that's neither yes nor no, but just answer the question. And if the judge says, no, just yes or no, then you, I would think, say yes or no, but qualify it. Well, have you stopped beating your wife? Yes or no? No, in that I've never beaten my wife. No, that I'm not married. I mean, you know... The, <laughs> What do they going to say? Jury, remember the first word, strike the rest as non-responsive. It's responsive. You're explaining why the no has to be qualified. Okay, so, so that's fine. But the other thing that's extremely important to remember is that that attorney does not get the last word. And I don't care which side they're on. Because you can always redirect, recross, redirect, direct, Double, double cross, whatever it is, you can go back and forth, back and forth. So let's suppose this is a lawsuit and you're the plaintiff and defense attorney stood up and said, yes or no? Answer the question, yes or no? And you turn to the judge for help, judge was no help. So you gave the answer with a qualification. Guy objects and screams and yells, but of course it's in the record, the jury heard it. Your attorney can then stand up and straighten the whole thing out. Redirect, recross. They, yeah, so... The other attorney asked you a second ago, yes or no, have you stopped beating your wife? And you said you couldn't answer it, yes or no. Why is that? I can ask that. So it can get corrected by the other attorney by simply redirecting or recrossing. That's extremely easy to do. But you might say, Steve, what if by rights you have a question that should be answered yes or no and someone on the stand is being squirrely? Let me give you an example, and I'll explain this to you as best I can. On cross-examination on the important stuff, you should never ask a question you don't know the answer to. And you should also never ask it as a question. And this is cross-examination 101, okay? So let's suppose that there was an accident on August 1st. The accident was on August 1st, okay? And the driver of the car in question is on the stand. Their license was revoked on August 1st. It had been revoked a while earlier. And it got reinstated on the 2nd. But at the moment of the accident, their license was revoked. Okay? So I can ask as an attorney. I won't say yes or no. But some, be some people will be tempted to go, yes or no. Your license was revoked at the time of the accident, wasn't it? There's no need to do yes or no. Or if you've got your facts straight, you simply ask, isn't it true that at the moment of the accident, your license was revoked, wasn't it? The truth is yes. They have to say yes. Now, they might be tempted to say, well, I got it renewed the next day. That wasn't the question. And by the way, that's what I would say. That wasn't the question. The question is, isn't it true 
the day of the accident, August 1st, your license was revoked. Isn't that true? At that point, you almost hope they say, I got it renewed the next day again, because then I can ask it a third time. That wasn't the question, was it? I'm not asking you when you eventually got your license after the accident. I'm asking you about the moment in time where your car collided with my client's car, putting her in the hospital. Isn't it true that at that moment in time, your license was revoked, wasn't it? I dare you to try dancing around that question. Because every time you do, I get to re-ask it. (laughs) By the way, the witness doesn't have to answer. The jury knows the answer to the question. Okay? Now, if they say, oh, I had a license that day. Oh, did you? August 1st? Now, there's a bunch of different ways to prove they got their license renewed on August 2nd. Certified records from the state, for instance. Uh, and things of that nature. But assuming my facts are true, they would most likely try to tap dance around it by saying, well, I got my license the next day or something, because that's the best they've got. But when they don't answer the question, instead of going, Your Honor, I asked them a yes or no question. They didn't give me a yes or no. Don't ever act as if you've lost control of the witness in cross-examination. Because if you have your information down that well, and you are correct, it's more fun, and the jury will enjoy it more. I'm talking about fun for the jury. (laughs) If you have a witness who doesn't want to admit something, and you get to ask it 16 different ways, and it becomes painfully obvious that this is the important thing about this whole story, is that an unlicensed driver caused the accident. That sounds much more compelling than a driver, an unlicensed driver. And you can bet that phrase, unlicensed driver, is going to be like the headline of my closing argument. So when I ask the question, isn't it true you did not have a valid driver's license at the moment your car rammed into my client's car? Isn't that true? I got it renewed the next day. Or... They took it away by mistake. Or, it's not the question I asked, is it? The question I asked was, and I get to ask it again. So, the thing about it is, is that an experienced trial attorney, or a, an attorney who's tried cases, unfortunately, trial attorney has taken on this odd connotation of uh, ter- attorneys who do personal injury work, despite the fact that every one of those cases, there's a trial attorney on the other side defending the case. But, an experienced attorney who knows how to try a case won't start by saying yes or no. I'm going to ask you a question. They'll simply ask you a question where the correct answer is yes or no. It'll be painfully obvious from the way the question is posed. And if you don't answer it yes or no, that's going to be to your detriment. Trust me. Trust me. And you don't know how many times trying cases where I've got the dirt on somebody. I know I've got the dirt on them. And they're in the witness box. I stand up and I get to ask some questions. And it's going to be fun. And when I get a combative witness who doesn't want to admit what is true and I can prove through other means, it's more fun for me (laughs) and the jury if you try to dodge those questions by answering something other than yes or no. So... I will ask that question, like I said, three different ways, and I'll get the answer eventually. And the jury will have it imprinted in their minds on such a level. Oh, that person wasn't licensed. That's why the attorney asked that question and kept trying to get that answer. And he finally got the answer he wanted. And no, I'm not looking for an answer. I am stating the conclusion with my question. And I'm just simply phrasing it as a question. And yes, that is exactly how you cross-examinations. I've actually had people, when I mentioned these kinds of concepts before, go, Steve, that's not fair. You're kind of like cheating, aren't you? No, no. Direct examination of somebody. You ask questions and they answer questions. Cross-examination. You are allowed to ask, and in fact, you're encouraged to do so by those who teach trial practice, to ask closed-ended questions 
which means that the question itself tells you what the answer is, and the best you can do is either agree or disagree, but if you disagree with somebody who knows what they're talking about, it's going to get worse for you. So, getting back to my example, isn't it true that on August 1st, your license was revoked? Yes. Now, ask yourself which would have gone better for the witness, to have done that like I just did, or the earlier example where the person argued about it. And so a good attorney, before putting a witness on the stand, will warn them about what might be coming. They'll probably know. And explain to them the best thing you can do is keep your answers short, keep them simple. Don't get fired up. Don't get argumentative. Tell the truth and move on with your life. And that's where you go. By the way, I also talked a while back about people taking oaths to testify. And I mentioned that some courts will ask, ask you to put your hand on a Bible and raise your right hand. Um, I should have clarified that that's becoming archaic. There are still some courtrooms that have a Bible in them. But a bailiff, the judge, or someone might ask you, how do you want to take your oath? You will have to take an oath, but the oath is going to say, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth? And so you can simply say, I will affirm, and I ain't, I ain't putting my hand in the Bible. And they'll say, fine, raise your right hand and affirm to tell the truth. I affirm I'll tell the truth. I had a few people, though, unfortunately, who wanted to argue about that. And they said, well, Steve, I will simply go into court and I'll refuse to take an oath, but I'll still testify. Well, that's not testifying. You're not testifying if you're not under oath. And a court won't let you get in the witness box after you've refused to take an oath. So you can refuse to take an oath on a Bible, but you're going to have to affirm that you're going to tell the truth. And if you refuse to affirm to tell the truth, then you'll be held in contempt. I'm just letting you know. Just letting you know. So the court will say, you don't have to swear in a Bible. You don't have to swear on anything. But you do have to raise your right hand and affirm to tell the truth. Now, I've had people say, Steve, why would raising your right hand and affirming to tell the truth make you more likely to tell the truth? I, I don't know that it does. I think with many people it does. I think many people have a personal conviction where if they've promised to do something, they'll do it. But that's not true of everybody. But I can tell you that in many places, once you've affirmed to tell the truth, if you don't, that'd be perjury. And if you weren't sworn and you were simply just talking in the witness box, that might not be considered perjury in some jurisdictions. I don't know. But a judge will not let you get in the witness box and say, he didn't or she didn't uh, swear an oath or affirm to tell the truth or anything like that. But we're going to let him talk and tell stories. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So if you've got a problem with the idea that you might be held in contempt for refusing to take an oath, um, problem's not with me. I'm simply telling you what the situation is in a courtroom. So that's a story. But getting back to the original story. If they demand that you answer yes or no, the first thing you do is just say, I'll answer the question to the best of my ability. Answer it to the best of your ability, whether or not it involves a yes or no. If they object and demand that you do that, you turn to the judge and go, Your Honor, I can't? And if the judge were to insist on it, well, then the attorney on the other side, either your attorney or the prosecutor, whoever it might be, can then straighten it out on redirect or recross. So there you go. But that, like I said, is probably the question I get asked the most about actual trial practice. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. If at first you don't succeed, then skydiving definitely isn't for you.